Good morning. It's good to see you today. Let's stand and sing together. I was buried beneath my shame. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb till I met you. I was breathing but not alive. All my failures I tried to hide. It was my truth till I met you. You call my name. You call my name. Jesus 
Boy, sing it. Great last verse. Kill the wind. Bible says it is a trustworthy statement deserving full acceptance that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners, among whom I am the foremost, Paul said. Jesus can save anybody. It's why he came. It's why he's working in this room today to bring salvation to the lost. Latricia is going to sing as we lead and worship him because of that. When I think about the love, how he saved how he raised me, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost, how he healed me to the uttermost. When I think about the Lord, how he picked me up and turned me around, how he placed my feet on solid ground. When I think about the Lord, he saved me, how he raised me, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost, how he healed me to the uttermost. When I think about the Lord, how he picked me up and turned me around, how he placed my feet on solid ground.
and delivered me from every fear. Those who look on Him are radiant. They'll never be ashamed. They'll never be ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard me.
Taste and see that the Lord is good and He will give you everything. Amen? I know you're asking for some things, but He will give you everything. I pray today that as we look into God's Word, and we will be really challenged from God's Word. Taste and see that the Lord is good. And I pray if you are here today and you have not tasted and you have not seen, I pray today you'll have a great experience of tasting and seeing who He is. Coming to know Him as your Lord and Savior, taking your next step towards Jesus Christ. This morning, I want to invite you into my quiet time. It was a day in December last year that my quiet time was very allowed. I was texting a friend, and he is in the room today, and as we were texting, this is what he texted me, and I pray we will listen carefully because our scripture is found in Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 6. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are those, if you paraphrase, who wants to taste, who wants to see that the Lord is good, He will give you everything. On April 1st, 1908, John Lake had a vision of himself being transported from America to South Africa and preaching the gospel. The dream was repeated several times, and 18 days later, Mr. Lake and his family left Africa with a dollar fifty in their pockets. Mr. Lake was well aware that it would cost $125 to get his family of eight through immigration, which was nearly a hundred times what they had in the pockets at the time. But he felt as though God had told him to go. When the family arrived in South Africa, Mr. Lake got into the immigration line despite not having enough money to enter the country. That's when someone tapped him on the shoulder and handed him $200. The Lakes boarded a train for Johannesburg but they still had no place to live. So they prayed on the way there that God would provide. And when they arrived, they were greeted at the train station by a woman named, true story, Mrs. Goodenough, (laughs) who said that God had told her to give them a place to live. It's hard to calculate the influence of someone's life. But John Lake was an integral part of a revival that swept across South Africa. He later returned to America and planted 40 churches. Why did God use Mr. Lake in his family this way, many ask. But Mr. Lake, after very uh, few answers that he gave, these are the lines, and I quote Mr. Lake once said, I believe the hungriest man for God that ever lived. I believe I was the hungriest man for God that ever lived. And if you stay humble and if you stay hungry, there's nothing God cannot do through you, unquote. I put it in bold writing. I believe I was the hungriest man for God that ever lived. And I texted my friend, I said, my dear brother, and I have it here, can you please help me stay humble and hungry? And and, and I told, if you find me moving away from being humble and being hungry, just kick me on my ankles so you'll remind me. Later I realized this brother of mine wears cowboy boots, so that'll really hurt. (laughs) And we need someone to give us a small kick on our ankles sometimes to remind us to be humble and hungry for the things of God. Jesus, speaking in the Sermon on the Mount, wrote these words in Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 6. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. My church family this morning, and those of you who are watching online, we dishonor God when we read about movements like this from the past, but don't seek and expect those same movements today. 
Someone once said, and I had made note, we, we, we live our lives as if his name was I was instead of his name being I am. Listen carefully. His name is not I was. His name is I am. And when we live continually living in the past, we rob God of the opportunities that he has for us today and tomorrow and the days ahead. Oh, remain hungry and thirsty, my friends. Come, let us feast around God's word because when he saved you, when he healed you, when he set you free, it makes you want to shout hallelujah. I'm afraid we often live for God as if his name was I was. But let me remind you, he is I am. A continual, present, active God who today at this very moment is at work in my heart as well as in your heart. In the small book I got for Christmas, the loveliness of Jesus, Samuel Rutherford writes, for every day we may see and experience something new in Christ. His love hath neither brim nor bottom. His love hath neither brim nor bottom. What I'm trying to tell you is that God's love is everlasting and ever flowing. You need a fresh dose of His love every single day. Living for Jesus, living for Jesus every day. And I want to ask you today in this new year, 2019, how are you going to inconvenience yourself in order that you remain hungry and thirsty for God? I, if, I, if I interview if each one of you, you're going to tell me, if I ask you this question, do you want to make a difference for God? The answer will be an astounding yes. But let me remind you, if you want to make a difference for God in this world, it will inconvenience you. It will inconvenience you. Now, just the songs we're singing, Taste and See that the Lord is good. My friends, you are rich in Christ. God has created us with eternity in mind. This world is just a passing by. A.W. Tozer said, if worship is too boring for you, you are not ready for heaven. Oh, they're going to be singing 10 more songs and 10 more songs and 10 more songs into eternity. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was, who is, and is to come. For every day we need to find something new in Christ. C.S. Lewis said, I find in myself a desire which no experience in this world can satisfy. The most probable explanation is that I was made for another world. You and I were made for another world. God said in his word that he's gone to the Father to prepare a place for us. And today, if you believe in Jesus Christ, let me remind you, you have a reservation in the mansion of heaven waiting for you. Living for Jesus. But unfortunately, Jeremiah pens his words, Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 13. He says, my people have committed two sins. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and made cisterns for themselves. Broken cisterns that can hold no water. And perhaps you are here today, your cistern is holding no water. Perhaps you have looking in places that you should not have been looking to satisfy your hunger and thirst. I want to remind you, you cannot satisfy your hunger and thirst for righteousness at the buffet table of the devil. You cannot satisfy that hunger and thirst for righteousness at the buffet table of the enemy. It is there to keep you hungry for the wrong reasons. It is there to destroy you. It is there to get you off the path that God has wanted you to. And you know what I'm saying. You need to come back to your marriage. You need to come back to your husband. You need to come back to your wife. You need to return home because you spent far too long at the buffet table of Satan and today is a good day to return home. I'm talking about we are building cisterns and plans on our own. 
You will never satisfy that hunger and thirst for righteousness if you search anywhere. Let me encourage you. Your hunger and thirst for righteousness is found in Jesus and Jesus alone. He has a bread of, for us every day. You cannot. Because if you could satisfy your hunger elsewhere, you will not be here. If you could satisfy your thirst elsewhere, you will not be here. You are here because something inside of you is making you hungry and thirsty for King Jesus. And I pray today that you will never leave this place or never turn, if you're watching online, turn it off until you have met with Jesus. It's far too long. It's far too long that we're just living our lives unsatisfied. You are satisfied in Christ. Your satisfaction is guaranteed. Which, you, you tell me, what is better than amazing grace? What is better than forgiven sin? What is better than a clean conscience? What is better than a new heart? What is better than true joy? What is better than peace? What is better than eternal hope? What is better than community? What is better than repentance? What is better than restoration? What is better than reconciliation? It's all found in Jesus. In Jesus. Oh, I want to invite you today, my friend. I want to invite you, as we behold God's righteousness, and if we are honest about our brokenness and our sin, we become able to experience His saving grace. His saving grace. And if you want to have satisfaction guaranteed, if you want to hunger and thirst for righteousness, I'm going to use a theme that our pastor has, to know, to show, and to grow. But number one, if you want to be hungry and thirsty for righteousness, you've got to know God. You've got to know God. You've got to know the source. Because if you know the source, if you know God who is alive and is watching over you, your victory is guaranteed every day. Your victory is guaranteed. I look at uh, Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah chapter 55 is a great, great scripture. I wrote in my Bible, there's a restaurant called Poor Folks. Right? Am I saying it right? It means for poor people, right? Poor folks. I just wrote in my Bible, these first three words are poor folks, for, for poor folks. <laughs> if you are broken, if you are so broken, this verse is for you. You've got to know that you know that you know that you're broken. You see, some of us don't know that we know that we know that we are broken. We think we are good people and Jesus makes us better. No, no, no. Let me, let me correct that. You are dead people. Jesus makes us alive. The Bible says, no, not one is righteous. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Isaiah chapter 53 talks about the suffering servant. For he grew up before him like a young plant, Isaiah 53, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows acquainted with grief and as one from whom uh, men hid, uh, hide their faces. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was a chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Isaiah 53. Isaiah 54, it talks about the covenant of peace. The work has been done. In Isaiah 53, Isaiah 54 talks about the covenant of peace. Now for the poor folks in Isaiah 55. Oh, come everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and he who has no money, come, buy and eat. Look at that. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Come. Come to the banquet hall of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come, you have no money. Come and buy and eat because the price is already paid by Jesus. Already paid. Come, 
Verse number two, Isaiah 55. Why do you spend your money for what which is not bread and your labor for what does not satisfy? Aren't we tired of wasting our time, our talents, and our treasure on things that don't satisfy? Aren't we looking in the wrong places that left us hurt and have scars on us because we looked in the wrong places? Why burn your energy anywhere else? Come to Jesus. Listen diligently to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. He's saying, come. Come. Come to me and I will feed you. Come to me and I will quench your thirst. Come to me. In me I found all the riches in life. Paul wrote, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. I want to know when you know God more and more and more, when you know that you are broken and know that he is righteous, you have a victory guaranteed. He never turn you away. No, not one. He satisfies everyone. Our guilt and shame is wiped away with the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. And I got news for you. He didn't only die for you. He died in place of you. And I'm looking at, I'm looking at this in my quiet time. And I'm saying, God, why are you leading me in all this, uh, this passage of Scripture? There must be a reason. And, and, and then I look at the, the life of David. David is anointed king, 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel chapter 5, the Philistines come to attack David. 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse number 17, he just anointed king, and, and, and the enemy is coming towards David, and David inquired of the Lord. He says, Lord, shall I go up against the Philistines? Will you give them into my hand? Yes, go, David. David goes and crushes the enemy in 2 Samuel chapter 5, destroys them destroys their idols, come back and celebrate. Hey, but that's not the story. Look at what it goes on to say. The enemy returns. Now, I don't know the amount of time between the first uh, victory and the second, but the enemy has returned. When the enemy returned, David inquired of the Lord, Lord, should I go? God responds, no, wait, David, wait. Wait. Until you hear the sound of of the marching on top of the balsam trees. The Lord has gone before you. Then you go. What I'm trying to say, my friend, you cannot live 2018's victory in 2019. You cannot rely on the strength you got in 2018 to live it in 2019. What I'm trying to say is you cannot live today's struggle with yesterday's strength. You need a fresh anointing from God's word. And many of us are living today with yesterday's strength. Many of us are living this year with last year's strength. This year got challenges of its own, and God has a plan to feed you. You do not need to live today with yesterday's strength. You trust Him every day. Jesus taught His disciples to pray for daily bread. The lamentation the writer wrote that the, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. What I'm trying to say is once a week at Olive Baptist Church is not going to fix your marriage. It's your daily, daily denial to sin will fix your marriage. What I'm trying to say is you cannot. What I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to say is he's not the I was, he is the I am. It doesn't mean you had victory over a sin last year. This year it'll be a breeze. Well, I wish I was in the bush summer watching David pray. And David, I, David said, God, I got this. We, we just killed him yesterday. I got this. Many of you live as, I got this. You don't got this. That, well, that's a southern term. <laughs> Jesus got it. So quit living today with yesterday's strength. Aren't you tired every time they're asking, so when did God speak to you? Well, you know, when I was 15 years old, well, you're 40 now. You mean God was silent all this time? So when was the last time you told someone about Jesus? Well, you know, uh, when I was in college, well, you're 70 today. Do you know why? 
you are so content with living with stale righteousness. You're so content. And the two memory verses you learned in Awana is the only verses you'll ever know the rest of your life because you are so content, you're not hungry and thirsty for the things of God. And the lost world is multiplying and the need is great, but you are content where you are. King David, King David, that's what he said. And see, see, you, you see, David never really knew Goliath's strength. He was too busy knowing God's strength. He spent his time knowing God. He didn't take his time going to his cave. Well, let's look at Goliath. Where should I hit him with a stone? You know, uh, if I hit him there, he may wake up. If I hit him there, no! He went into his cave. Oh, God, won't you give us victory? I know you, the living God. Won't you deliver this Philistine army to me? That's where victory is. You are not designed to know the enemy. You are designed to know God. We spend too much time trying to analyze the attacks of the enemy. We need to spend our time knowing who God is. Don't live today with, uh, you know, with, with yesterday said David was hungry and thirsty for God. Even when David sinned, when he committed adultery and when he murdered, he said, Lord, in Psalm 51, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit away from me. Restore, restore, restore. And many of you are here today. I want you to pray that prayer. Lord, won't you restore the joy of my salvation? Won't you restore the joy when I woke up in the morning and open God's word like, wow. Well, many of you will open your Bible tomorrow morning and your bookmark will be on January 2nd. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, you made a commitment. Oh, I, I'm, this year I'm going to read the Bible. Open your Bible. It's still stuck in Matthew chapter 1. It's okay. Keep on going. Keep on going. Ask the Lord to restore. Ask the Lord to give me an appetite for the things of, of God. Lord, remind me the goodness of your word. Let me go to the banquet hall of Jesus Christ. Oh, we must learn, my friend. John Stott wrote, we must allow the word of God to confront us, to disturb our security, to undermine our complacency, and to overthrow our patterns of thought and behavior. Allow God. Do you remember one of those days when you fasted and prayed, when you had cancer? Well, God healed you now. You forgot all about him. You remember those days when you prayed for your wayward child? Now he came to Jesus and you forgot all about him. You remember days when you were having trouble whether you're going to lose your job or keep your job? Well, you got a new job now. You forgot about him. You remember? You remember? And you want to serve a living God with yesterday's victories. I got news for you. I got news for you. You'll never live stories like Mr. Lake. I want to say boldly today, I want to be the hungriest man that ever lived. You fight for second position. You may come there. I don't know. But we, we cannot say, Lord, I'm not going to go to your word. You, you can never outsmart God. You can never outsmart your word. Go to God's word. It's still as sweet as honey from the honeycomb. You want to know God? Go to his word. Your quiet time will be allowed. There's no such thing as quiet time. It's a loud time. God is speaking. I'm like, I, I, I'm looking around my room. I'm like, who told God about the situation? I'm like, well, right. He knows anyway. People ask Mother Teresa, hey, Mother Teresa, what, what do you say to God when you pray? It seems like he answers all your prayers. Mother Teresa said, well, when I pray, I don't talk. I just listen. What I'm trying to say is, my friend, it doesn't mean you had victory yesterday, you'll have victory today. If you trusted God yesterday, trust God today. Oh, you are broken and I am broken and we need a Savior like never before. I pray that you and I will come to the banquet hall of our Lord Jesus Christ and we will enjoy the diet that he has for us. Pastor did a, 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 a devotion for our pastoral staff last year 
And he was talking about first uh, Peter chapter 2 and verse number 2, like newborn babes to, to, to crave pure spiritual milk. And pastor said these words, if you eat wrong, you will grow wrong. If you eat right, you will grow right. I'm so proud to tell you that our pastor feeds us right. He feeds us right, and if you're growing in any other way, it's your responsibility. He feeds us right, and we are growing right, living for Jesus. So number one, if you want to live a hungry and thirsty life for Jesus, your victory is guaranteed if you inquire of the Lord. Ask the Lord. Ask the Lord. Ask the Lord. When I was growing up in South Africa, my, my mother every year, in, in South Africa, our rice was called Aunt Caroline's. Here it's called Uncle Ben's. It's the same family, okay? And so, so we will buy 10 kgs of rice when I was a kid. And I'll tell my mother, let me carry the rice. That one 10 kg rice was for the entire month. I grew up with rice and beans. And so every day, so I'll bring the rice home, cut the bag, throw it in a big bucket. Every day my mother will cook one cup of rice. If we had guests coming, they'd have two cups of rice. That bucket of rice kept us for the entire month. Don't live your Christian life like that. I'll go to church on Sunday, it'll last me for the entire week. And that's what we do. They say now an average faithful Christian go to church one and a half times a week. That means go to church on Sunday once a month and have one conversation about God. That's considered faithful. Remember these days when you rejoiced when you came to this place? Now you're kicking, hissing, fussing, cussing to come here. Because you think you know too much. You think you know too much about God. And God saying, you didn't even pass the content says yet. What are you talking about? There's so much more I want to know God. Know God. Number two, when you hunger and thirst for righteousness, we show. Not only we know and when we inquire of God, we show. We have a harvest guaranteed when we show the world who Jesus is. Amen? How many of you believe that? I mean, I, when I was singing that song, it makes me want to shout. When I think about the Lord and how He saved me and how He raised me and how He put my foot on a solid ground, it makes me want to... <laughs> it makes me want to... It doesn't make me want to whisper, my friend. It doesn't make me... Make it hush. Somebody did not keep it hush. That's why you came to know Jesus. Someone shouted and you came to know Jesus. We should shout because somebody else must come to know Jesus. The gospel came to us because it was heading somewhere else. I was up in Connecticut last week for a funeral. One of our young leaders, 40-year-old, just suddenly died on New Year's Day. He texted me at 11 o'clock, Happy New Year's, Pastor. One o'clock, I hear he died. Went to his funeral. There was a young man came up, came to the podium, a young man, just, just, you know, looking rough. He was, he's a good member of our church. Just, he's so depressed because of his friend died. And he, and, and he told Jamel, uh, Jamel's mom, he said, Mom, can you please stand? Can I give you a hug? And he went and hugged him. Jamel's mom. He came to the podium. His dad, listen to this, he's a director of evangelism at the Baptist Convention of New England. His own son was not following Jesus. I'm sitting on the stage with his dad. And when his son woke up, his dad said, oh boy, I don't know what's going to happen here. The son went and hugged his friend's mom. He came back to the podium and he said, dear mom, let me tell you about your son. If it were not for your son, I would not come to know Jesus Christ. If it were not for your son, I would have no food to eat. If it were not for your son, I would not have no bed for two years. If it were not for your son, I would be in jail today. Can someone tell that about you? His mom is shocked. Really? That's not the Jamal I know. No, no. He came to know Jesus. We disciple him and he's gone to be with Jesus. The church today is to fully display the glory of Christ. The church is to show the world who Jesus is. If you remain hungry and thirsty, you will show the world who Jesus is. And I looked in Scripture, who was the most thirsty person who came to know Jesus? Well, the Samaritan woman, of course. 
John chapter 4, Jesus went out of his way, sat at the well, met a Samaritan woman who came during the day because she was so ridiculed if she came in the morning or in the evening. And he's having this conversation, and she told these words, John chapter 4 and verse number 15, Sir, give me this water so I'll thirst no more. I don't think she even realized what she was asking for. Uh, by that time, she didn't even realize who she was talking to. But the first person Jesus revealed that he was the Messiah was a lady who had five husbands. I don't even know her name. And she said, give me that water so I'll thirst no more. What happened after that? You see, when God takes a thirsty soul, she went back to Samaria. Samaritan revival happened, and all of Samaria came up. They took Jews to move down to Samaria for two days. And what happened? There was a Samaritan revival. Why, you ask? Because one woman was thirsty for God. A broken woman, a despised woman, a ridiculed woman, God called her, and today Samaritans know about Jesus because she went and told them, come and meet a man. Let me show you a man who knows all my dirty laundry. You see, God, when you are thirsty for the things of God, he will pick you up, he will dust you, and he will use you for his glory. You see, God does not kick out the brokenhearted, or put down the, the, the broken, he picks up and he brings them in and he uses them for his glory to show the world who he is. And God can use you if you say, Lord, I am broken, Lord. I am hungry, Lord. I am thirsty, Lord. Use me in my office workplace. Use me, Lord, in my school. Use me on the college campus. Use me. Use me. Use me. Use me. Use me. Oh, you cannot find satisfaction anywhere. It's at the foot of the cross that Jesus says, Blessed are those who hunger, who thirst for this righteousness, then you will be satisfied because when your thirst is satisfied, there's a harvest on its way. When your thirst is satisfied, there's revival on its way. Uh, when your thirst is satisfied, Pensacola, transformation is coming if you're hungry and thirsty. So God has called you and I to reach our city, and lo, dear, I pray that we will not find our satisfaction filled elsewhere. We will not find our thirst filled elsewhere. We will not find our hunger filled elsewhere. We will be satisfied when we come to King Jesus. I told you a story last year. There's about 8,000 Vietnamese in Pensacola. And my wife and I were praying, we we'll meet some Vietnamese people. So reading pals came to our church, helping to, uh, going alongside and helping kindergarten kids read English. Yeah, me, remember? Um, yeah, God help us. Okay. <laughs> so, so Deshni and I signed up, and I'm like, okay, let's go and teach them some South African English. All right? <laughs> and so we went and we got certified for free at United Way. And so, say, we have two young boys. I hope you don't mind, they're Vietnamese. I'm like, what? Yeah, they're Vietnamese. We were waiting for a while to match them with someone. I mean, praise the Lord. I looked at Deshni, I'm like, yeah, this is a God moment. I go to Macmillan Elementary School, pulled in the first day. And so we go into this class. 19 Vietnamese kids, 19, with a part-time Vietnamese teacher. Two boys come running to us, and we're like, okay, I'm going to teach this boy English. I'm like, then a voice said, Pastor Sean, Deshni. I'm like, okay. She was here in the first service. Miss Pat Castro was serving in that class for 18 years. Is Jason Crawford here? Yeah, there's Jason right there. Brother, she was serving that class for 18 years showing the love of Jesus Christ for 18 years to Vietnamese students and their families. When I walked in the room, she said, I prayed for 18 years God will send someone from Olive Baptist Church. 
She was seated right here, and I called and introduced her to the church. He said, let's love these children so they'll come to know Jesus. So Desh and I are so glad to give one hour a week to teach Vietnam, Vietnamese kids English. Mr. Frankly, you know the power. What happens in the classroom, my brother? Who are you showing Jesus to? Show me your phone. You have a calendar appointment that you have a conversation this week with someone who don't know Jesus. Show me. If you have in your calendar one hour to go and read with someone or to go and, go and witness to someone or you made an appointment or you wrote, I'm going to pray for this person to come to know Jesus at my workplace. Show me. I'll tell you why you can't show me. Because you have lost your hunger and thirst. Because your family is fixed right now. Because your addiction is gone right now. So I forgot Jesus. I pray I'm going to ask you, let's we, Olive Baptist Church, can truly say we are the hungriest people for God in this whole wide world. So if you remain hungry, my friend, someone in this city is coming to know Jesus. Please come tonight. We have a college student going to be baptized. Please come tonight to hear a college student preach. And you're going to see what God is doing at the University of West Florida. It will blow your mind. When was the last time did you fast and pray and say, God, uh, when, when, when? Because we're living in the I was. Don't live in the I was. Live in the I am. I am. I am. Be, a, be a, having a constant hunger, a constant thirst, a constant, constant, constant. Matthew 5, let your light so shine before all men that they will glorify your Father who is in heaven. So if you, are, if you want to be hungry and thirsty, not only you know God, your victory is guaranteed, not only you will show a harvest is guaranteed, but you will grow. A community is guaranteed. Find other people who is hungry and thirsty. This week I, I met the two brothers and I told them, can you hold me accountable so I will grow for Christ? This week, Met the two guys. I said, can you help me? They haven't been to seminary. They, 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 I, you help me. You help me be a better husband for Deshni. You, you help me. And I, I told them, if you see me going off the way, you kick me on my ankle. Do it gently the first time. Yeah, I'll get it. Do you have community like that? Because let me remind you, you cannot serve from a dry place. You cannot serve from a dry place. You cannot love from a dry place. You, you cannot grow from a dry place. You need someone to walk alongside you. you. You need someone to walk alongside you. You need someone to celebrate with. You need someone to, someone to multiply your joy and divide your grief. You need that. Community. When you are hungry, find other men. Find other women who are hungry and thirsty. Next week, Sunday... Ordinary men gathering. You don't want to miss this. We're going to have uh, Pastor Trailer in the Rock. 5.30 next week. 5.30, Sunday night. We're going to have Brinner. Breakfast for dinner. Chicken and waffles. I never had it. I'm about to have it next week. Chicken and waffles. Come load up on your calories. Okay? The women are going to meet in Pasmo Hall. Carrie Gann is our new women's leader here at Olive. We're so glad about that. She's going to be having a conversation with Miss Liz and Rachel Hynote. If you don't come, lady, I'm going to tell Miss Liz to call you. <laughs> oh, she, we, 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 we'll find your number. Do you know why we have these things at church? We want you to build community and grow for Jesus. Men, come on. Let's get together and help each other growing towards Jesus Christ. Next week, Sunday. Please come and be involved. Lord, I worry because I forget your wisdom, Lord. I resent because I forget your mercy. I covet because I forget your beauty. I sin because I forget your holiness. I fear because I forget your sovereignty. You always remember me, Lord. You always remember me. 
Get into a community who's hungry and thirsty for Jesus. 